It's way above 40 degrees Celsius under the shade of a sun hat, one of the hottest day of the year. It obviously accelerates the evaporation of the Dead Sea and of bodily fluids. <coughs> How lovely it is to start the day at midday, sailing an oily sea of salt, May Day. This is the only boat on the northern edge of the Dead Sea. The last time there was a baby on a boat on the Dead Sea was over 75 years ago. During the independence war. The captain bathed us in happiness, undeterred seemingly by the burning breeze mixed with a whiff of brine sulfur. The water here is twice as heavy as a regular sea. It's times 10 saltier than any other ocean. It's very complicated and lots of maintenance. We have to be cleaning every single day the boat the engine. The Dead Sea sinks in superlatives, the most, the least, the whole or nothing. This is one of the saltiest bodies on earth and also the deepest lake in the world. Okay, it's like 480 meters deep. There's around 600 Olympic pools are dried up every day in the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea used to be some minus 390 meters below sea level. That was a century ago. Now, due to the intense evaporation, especially in the summer, and overuse of its sources of water, the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, for irrigation and consumption, it's somewhere minus 430 meters below sea level. But the main story here is a 70%, which has been dried out almost completely mainly because fresh water is the most valuable asset of the entire region. We just don't have enough drinking water for everybody. The stratification of the shoreline reveals the intensity of the receding sea level. So it's like one centimeter every three days. So you get like a meter, over a meter drop every year. Every step is one year. The Dead Sea is enormous amount of fresh water to sustain at the same level. The scientific world likes to be using the, the terminology of uh, the year 2050, so which will have a small little pool of salt remaining then, and everything else will be dried up. The more the Dead Sea is receding, the more uh, the minerals here that right now can be a therapeutic for millions of people worldwide can become toxic. So Actually, to... since the 1970s, there have been two Dead Seas. One body of water on the southern edge is totally artificial, with less than 10 meter deep pools and evaporation ponds, the site of the local minerals and tourism industries. The other body up north in the West Bank is natural, what remains of the real Dead Sea. That's where we are sailing. Because the Dead Sea is receding, the fresh water is melting the sediment layers of the Dead Sea, creating cavities that grow into sinkholes. Look at the entire shorelines over here. We have 7,000 sinkholes. Around 700 appear every year. Look at this car. It was underwater a year ago. The only way to explore this world wonder is solely by boat. Wow, this is indeed a world of wonders from a bird's eye view. With the Dead Sea, we're seeing seeing the light coming out of the Dead Sea. We step foot at the oasis just revealed by the everlasting lower and lower tide. It's like stepping on a new moon, a moon aplenty with fresh sweet water pools that were underwater not long ago. God, such a relief. Ecotourism is just a great way to be doing conservation on the long run for the Dead Sea. This is a man-made problem, and therefore it's a man-made solution. Ecotourism is a big part of it, getting people aware of the situation. Yet, a meaningful conversation on the conservation of the Dead Sea would seem dead in the water, so to speak. The Red Sea Dead Sea Canal project is off the table. Israel's neighbors, the Palestinians on the northern side, the Jordanians on the eastern side, pump water from the Jordan River. Yet, Noam Bedain, wants to remain optimistic that the historical flow of the Jordan River can be restored. Because of the, the political arena and the tensions happening between countries, it was very hard to promote anything in terms of saving the Dead Sea. But the Abram Accord is showing that kind of hope. A solar energy desalinated water swap deal between thirsty Jordan and energy thirsty Israel with the United Arab Emirates as go-between has the potential to replenish the shores of the Jordan River and the banks of the Dead Sea. Meanwhile, we reach a salty beach lying in the sun that's been uncovered by the diminishing water levels only a couple of weeks ago. Salty iridescent mosaic carpets emerge from the translucent waters. Putting the focus on the life, on the positive, on the beauty of it is a way to get everybody's attention to understand what, they're, what, what is it they're actually losing.
Pierre Kloschendler, I-24 News, along the Dead Sea. Let's sail this winter. 